Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, episode 52, Danger Street, and first issue special, episode 2, where we will be covering Danger Street number 2, and first issue special number 2. Um, I'm enjoying this, and so let's get started. So first up, let's cover Danger Street 2, uh, which is, as before, this is chapter 2, called The Green Team, because... You know, the green team is uh, the first issue special characters, um, which I had never read, which is going to be an interesting as I go through it and give you my thoughts on it. Okay, so chapter two, uh, the green team, Tom King writer, Jorge Fuenes, uh, artist, cover artist, Dave Stewart, col colorist, Clayton Cowles, letterer, Dave Johnson did a wonderful variant cover, which I wish I had kind of gotten, but I do like the one. The cover here is by Mr. Fornes, um, and it is the young man who died, who's the member of the Dingbats who died. Um, good looks. He's in his co coffin, and it says the Green Team Book 2 kind of in graffiti underneath, like we're seeing the the top of the coffin with his head and that's toward the bottom and he's got two coins two pennies over his eyes they're actually one dollar pieces it looks like uh, and on one side is lady cop and on the other side is the creeper and i think it's really cool uh, i know when this comes out in a hardback i'm gonna get it uh because i'm gonna want all the covers because the cover the the alternate covers variant covers have been pretty good they're looking really nice so, again, it starts with Doc Fate's uh, helmet. Naboo, I guess, is chatting. And what we do is we see the three other dingbats eulogizing their friend. And it's really a kind of touching... It's a very... There's no one else at the funeral but them, the, per, the a priest, and Lady Cop. And it's really kind of sad. The art's gorgeous. Um... I'm in love with this man, gentleman, uh, Mr. Fornes' art. Uh, I'm just absolutely in love with it. And then it cuts away to Warlord and Michael, the blue disco star man, which I'm going to stop calling him that because this is getting this deep. They're finding a CD. They found out a cheap motel, and they're going to hold up. And star man, I mean, Michael is, cre is in a lot of pain. And I like this whole... There's a whole conversation between in, him and Warlord about the accidental killing of good looks. I mean, it was an accident. You know, they were doing something... This, our, these three heroes were doing something stupid and the kid happened to be come by and, you know, Michael jumped when he heard a noise and killed the kid. You know, it's it's... A confluence of bad decisions leading into the accidental death of a child. And he's grieving and he is in pain. And Warlord is talking to him. And I don't talk about my pops, my dad. The, my dad was a general and I grew up around military people. I was not in the military. He did not want that of, um, of his kids. And I didn't. I would have been a terrible soldier. But I kind of... I, I, I'm familiar with how they deal with one another in a level of camaraderie and they've got their back because as my father said is he couldn't tell me what war was like because he could only tell you what it was like for him and he it's different for everybody it is what it is but there's this great conversation in here where warlord is like hey it's okay remember we're going to get through this all this all the way what happened back there we have a lot of road ahead of us now and michael pushes back with you know he was a boy and warlord continues you know what i've been through a thousand quests in a world of dinosaurs and evil wizards trapped in the middle of an earth with nothing but my sword and i fought my way out this is nothing we'll fight our way out of this one easy you think this is going to get to us you don't know us if you think that and you know what and you know us star you're not alone you know what that okay you hold on to that you feel what you got to feel and use that as a ladder to climb out of whatever you're you have to right now 
and Starman, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Just remember, man, me and you, Starman and Warlord, we're soldiers fighting soldier to soldiers. That means we're brothers. I'm here. I'm not leaving you behind. One, it's a little callous in some ways, and it could be interpreted as being callous because, you know, the kid's dead and we're going to get over it. It's easy. But that's not the point of the conversation. The whole point of the conversation, I, for me, is the end. It's like, we'll get through this together. I've got your back. He's going to support his friend. And he feels responsible because, you know, they, they caused this to happen by their own reckless behavior. And I think that's a nice little thing. It's, it's a, more like a TV cop show kind of trope, but they placed in this superhero comic. I really liked it. And then we cut away to Manhunter is swimming in belief uh, below a yacht, and it's the Commodores from the Green Team. Uh, and he blows it up, and there are all these people, really creepy people, having conversations about the Commodore. Some woman's like going uh, about, you know, I, you know, how young is he and stuff like that. It's kind of creepy, but it's meant to be. And the ship blows up, and then you see Grandmaster walking out of the water on the beach, um, the Manhunter, and he calls Grandmaster. Yes, Manhunter. The hunt is commenced. And then you cut to Crazy Jack Ryder talking his stuff, and he's talking about the Outsiders. And this isn't Batman and the Outsiders. This is Outsiders of the book, one of the first issue specials, which is really, really weird. Really, really weird. And we'll get to it. I have glanced at it. I think it is like... I've not read all 13 issues of it. I think I've read most of them. But the Green Team and The Outsiders are two I know I've not read. And I'm not reading them until I get to them. But he's talking about... You know, he's trying to push through on the GTN, which is the, the conservative news network, on, that The Outsiders are these terrorists. And while, he, while we're listening to him talk about it, Lady Cop is walking around interviewing people the woman at you know the woman at the convenience store gas station who is kind of siding with jack she's a little more conservative she you know she's disparaging who's ever in the white house who's a liberal they're not saying it's biden but you know it's it's that you know it's these people all have different sides and she's asking about warlord and michael and the corvette they were driving in and she's just doing police work very law and order and then we cut to the green team, and they're playing poker. And it's the four main characters. And I'm going to go over their names when I get to green team. And the next one. And they've got code name Assassin. You know, they're playing cards, and they're talking about what's going on. And they're not very nice kids. I mean, because they are kids. They're children. That's part of the thing. Mutamorpho's arm is still on their desk. And then we cut. We switch back to the creeper laughing and she he's torturing somebody for information about the outsiders and he's they're asking about a guy named Nat the Nat the Nat N A T the G N A T um, it doesn't help you know he's it's just a creepy thing with the creeper then they cut back to the dingbats at the graveyard and they're all talking about it. And they're talking about they're going to find this guy and they're going to kill him. And they've decided that. It's, this, is, this is weird that these kids are. It's, because, I mean, it's all about grief. We're, we're seeing wages, uh, you know, people grieving. And part of the we're seeing the people in the community who were touched by this crime that need you know the people that lady cops interviewing and how not helpful they are some are disengaged some are making assumptions it's it's a nice little thing and then lady cop goes to visit one of the kids who's and gets door slammed in his face then we cut back to Warlord and Starman, and Starman's big idea is to use Naboo's helmet to bring the kid back from the dead. This, which is never a good idea. So, but then we cut to Apocalypse 
and where the new gods live, and High Father's come to visit. He's he's come to to Apocalypse to talk to Darkseid, and they're having a conversation, and he's not supposed to be there. Decides yelling, as you know well, this is a violation of the current truce. And you, are you here for war or surrender? And High Fathers goes, my words are not for you, Desaad. I will speak to your Lord, or I will not speak at all. And when all of you fools perish in the coming catastrophe, you will have the privilege of suffering in silence. And Desaad screams, how dare you? You are not, you are not to poison these sacred halls with your... And Darkseid raises his hands. Isaiah, my friend, please, why have you come? Ukas, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce Darkseid's real name, U-X-A-S, Ukas. My friend, this is my duty as a father, as a son, as a god to tell you Atlas the Great is gone, the sky is falling. And Darkseid whispers, what? No. He starts to rise, walks away from Desaad. Desaad keeps asking, Master, Master. By the, and he makes a comment, by the death of the first gods. And Darkseid and High Father embrace. And then we cut back to an Oro well, and Manhunter's blown it up. Or Horiel Field. And then we're seeing Jack... He's talking to commit the Commodore from the green team. And they're talking about the guy that he was torturing. Commodore has him. He's gotten the information he wants. Um, and he's telling Jack not to worry about it. You know, they'll take care of it. And that's and he goes, I mean, we're all on the same side. That's the important thing is what the kid says as Codename kills him. And we cut back to Lady Cop at the gas station. Uh, at a gas station out of town, Canagers, after Robert Canager. I like that. Um, and but they, he, she gets a lead. Um, it seems. And the last panel is the last page is a nine panel setup. I like this. It's got the the guy, the witness, Manhunter about to blow up the. Th- uh, Cecil Productions truck, and I'm going to go into what that's important to when, when I do Green Team. Jack is sitting there having a drink. There's the dead person who got the information for the comedy. There's di- da- Dark Side brooding. There's non fat the dingbats laying in his bed, wide awake. The Commodore on his boat. Warlord sitting there with the blue guy, <laughs> or as it says. And then. Naboo's helmet saying just ending just ending up the story but basically what we're hearing throughout what we're seeing these nine panels one is the witness the guy at the gas station and then Manhunter Jack the dead the dead guy dark side Lovec, um non-fat um, Commodore Warlord and the helmet and basically what we're hearing is the gas station attendant giving a good description of the two guys in the Corvette. All right. Overall, I loved it. I loved the first issue. I love the concept. Uh, I was excited about this after I read Roshar, Roshark. So I'm enjoying it. I hope you are. And I hope you're going to enjoy this episode uh, as I go through more of it. But this is a neat... It's a, I'm, I'm so engaged because of the concept of taking these 13-issue comic series from the 1970s and building a story around the 13 characters or 13 titles. And it's a detective. It's a thriller. It's That's what King writes best, I'm assuming. And that's why I'm loving it. So let's get on to, to issue two of First Issue Special. And let me give you some of the pertinent data. Okay. First issue special, volume one, number two. Uh, Cover date, May 1975. Cover artist, Jerry Gardinetti and Tahana Woods. Uh, Creative team, Joe Simon, co-creator of Captain America. Uh, Penciler, inker, Jerry Grandinetti. 
editors Joe Simon, Alan Asherman. Before I go into synopsis, I know who Joe Simon is, the creators. I want to talk about the creators. I have never heard of Jerry Grandinetti, so I'm looking him up. Uh, he wrote for DC, Marvel Quality, Love Gleason, American Comics Group, Charlton Tower, uh, Warren, Born in 1926, died 2010. I'm reviewing his, I went away and I'm back, uh, reviewing it. He did a lot of war comics. He worked for Eisner on Spirit. He's an interesting person. I'm going to look him up because I'd never heard of him. I, I did enjoy the art. I thought, I remember this as being Kirby. And it, there's a Kirby-esque feel to it because of the kids. But it's, it's a weird comic book. I, and I still, having read it three times, don't really get what's going on. Um... And I'm not read the so I didn't read you all the synopsis that is in the data, Marvel database. So hold one second. I'm gonna kind of switch references, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the, I'm just gonna read you the first paragraph of the synopsis in the database. The green team consists of Commodore Murphy, a shipping kind too, J.P. Houston, an oil magnate, and Cecil Sunbeam, a Hollywood producer. Though a combination of bank error and luck. In the stock market, shine boy Abdul Smith is able to acquire $1 million to join the team. The team meets weekly to finance adventures and inventions. Professor Apple pitches his great pleasure, American pleasure, GAP machine, GAP machine, to the boys. It is a large building in which people will take a journey for days at a time. Computers will simulate the pressure centers of the brain, excited the boys to decide to finance the machine. As the machine is being built, Broadway producer David D. Merritt organizes a mob attack, uh, a mob to attack the boys, claiming the machine will mean the end of theater, television, and sporting events. The boys retreat to the green room, waiting out the siege. So that's not all of it. That's just a quick ruse. But let me kind of go through this. I mean, I did a long thing with uh, number two of Danger Street. One, the art is very good. It is a very unique style. Uh, there's a nice little, I'm looking at the hardcover. But it's in the app, and it's easy to read. There's something about the action uniforms. Um, I did not read this text piece, but I'm going to read it later. But it starts with a splash page of the green team with a dollar bill, 25 cents, which I guess is how much the comic caught. And it shows them uh, around a meeting thing and a bunch of stuff going on. It's just kind of like in all four of them there. And then there's this neat thing, is introducing all the characters. The first one is introducing Abdul Smith. He's an African-American kid. He's a shoeshine boy, which is, I think, dated in 1975, but it's it's an old trope. He goes to this millionaire's, uh, this where millionaire's club where a bunch of old coots are there, and they're telling him about the green team. And that's two pages. One, a one-page where you know he's introduced he's got like a big panel of him it's beautiful very eisner-esque and then after that two pages we have the introduction of commodore of the commodore and his backstory as being a shipping tycoon and then we have jp houston oil magnet he's got one page and then a little mini where it's getting him setting him up as the team starts to assemble and then we get on and we have cecil sunbeam who owns sunbeam studios and it's a really nice, it's eight pages. And then the next one is the green team together. And this is where the story actually starts. And you, you've spent two, four, six, eight, nine, ten pages. Nine pages getting to the beginning of the story where the gap machine comes in. Um, Abdul Smith, he, he goes with his bank book and he... he goes to shine shoes on the stock exchange floor and makes himself a million bucks. Only in comics. And these four kids, they're battling. It's, I just don't really kind of get this comic. But they, you know, they set up the machine, as it said, in the process. Uh, they're under siege by gangsters. They put on the green team suits, which are basically, you know, coveralls with pockets full of money. And, you know, anything you would need to repel. And they're, I guess they're called boiler suits, and they're green. They're money green. And they battle it, and they go inside the gap with the producer, and it drives him insane. It's just a weird comic. I just don't even know how to say it. I will say this. It is beautifully drawn. It's it's a style you I've never seen before in a comic. 
for DC. I know this was a trial book. They were trying to, you know, just break down barriers in storytelling. I think, and I think they, I think they did a good job. I think it is Joe Simon who, at this point, I don't know how he old is, but he'd been writing comics for thirty years at this point. Is trying to be hip for the kids. Are they engaged with the kids? I don't know. I'd have been nine years old when this came out. Or no, I'd been 11 years old when this came out. And I don't think I would have enjoyed it. I think I'm enjoying aspects of it now. Just as like like an historical document. When it comes to comics. And what's unique about First Issue Special is a book. It was they're going to try different things. Some, some hit, some miss. It was just really weird. So check it out. I'm going to put some of the art up on the interwebs. And this this episode went a little long, 20 minutes to talk about two comics, but I was really excited. I'm at the last day. Tomorrow's the last day of a vacation. I got some editing to do tonight and some Gallifrey Most Wanted stuff to do tomorrow. Um, I recorded a couple episodes with Ron from Fantastic Comic Fan. He's Folks, listen to Ron's show. It's a blast. It's got great guests. Not counting me. I'm annoying. <laughs> but check it out and he's got a lot of stuff in the works he's doing a great show um, next week will probably be one of those episodes or I think Stargirl comes out Tuesday but I may not go to the comic shop next week because uh, I'm on a budget but we'll do uh, Star Spangled Girl and something else periphery with that another these compare and contrast I've got other things lined up. I'll be doing an episode on Justice League Roll Call and then Avengers Roll Call, and I have some guests lined up. But I do want to talk to you about one other thing, and I'm going to play the trailer um, right now. It's a new project I'm doing, and I kind of hinted at it uh, last week. So let me roll this trailer, and I'll tell you more about it. An heroic legacy beginning in 1941 that spans time, space, and the whole of the multiverse. Journey along with the Knights of the Stars. Ted, David, and Jack. They along with Will Payton, Michael Thomas, Prince Gavin, Tom Kalor, and Courtney Whitmore. They take the mantle of Starman and continue his legacy. I invite you to listen as I journey through these adventures of all these heroes and the rest of the Starman family here on Opal City Confidential, a Starman podcast, coming February 2023. So that, folks, is my trailer for Opal City Confidential to Starman Podcast. I've not got everything ironed out, so wait. it be probably first or second week of February where the first episode will drop. I will be covering all the Starmen, including uh, Michael. Uh, and I'll touch, kind of compare when I talk about his one solo. Uh, it's going to be weird. I'm going to be covering his issue of First Issue Special twice but in two different contexts, so I will probably make sure that it's not too much overlap, but there'll be a little bit. But I'm going to try to cover them all, with the main focus being on Ted and Jack, and maybe a little more for Will than the others. I, uh, I've i never read the Will Payton run. I own it. I bought it during the pandemic, thinking I would finally read it, but I'm going to kind of cover that, and it will be... I'm not going to read an issue of that until I'm going to cover it. So it's a lot of exciting stuff. And I've got started to get some guests lined up to come on and contribute so i'm looking forward to that so folks as always be smart be safe please be kind to one another and read some comic books and check out starman and follow along 